I, I said I would let's start here because I just felt like it was the beginning of the second chapter in my career, mm. you know, um, and and I don't know what's next. I don't even know what I'll do next, but I, I but I just felt like, and I've had such a long career. It's been about almost seven years in March, I think, and I've just. I've dealt with so much and I've been through so much and just trying to figure out my artistry and just myself as a person. I mean, I was a kid. I graduated high school and then six months later, this life started. So I was just a kid yeah. um, just going through life. So I, I just look at it like my second chapter in my career. So I settled with Let's Start Here. It's it's immersive. It, it's it's not just a selection of songs. Like that was the idea. Yeah. It wasn't like this was the first album I made where I was like, okay, it's weird because I was like I wanted to have purpose <laughs> without doing too much purpose, right? So like what I mean by that is like it gives you this feeling if you sit with it mm-hmm. and listen to it in its entirety. But it wasn't meant to like when it's done, you're like. Oh, I get like he was trying to say like it was. It's not. I didn't make it like that. It was mm-hmm. just for like an experience. But it wasn't some shit where it's like you listen and you just get these. You're looking for the just most profound lyrics and like. No, it was for like to create like an a, a, a like a moment, or like take you from put you into a moment. I mean, I've had this album for almost two years now. Yeah. So well, I started it almost two years ago. So so it's tight to see people like just feel what I was trying to like make them feel through music because I mean like I just I I knew it was um I knew you could do it because it's happened to me so I was trying to give that moment to people and then as I got a little bit older then I started to care about how people perceived me as a rapper Mm -hmm. you know and that was my earlier career and that lasted for a few years where I was like oh I gotta show people I can rap Mm -hmm. because I loved rap Mm -hmm. you know um and I think it's just my generation got like my rap generation got a bad rap and you were the avatar of that for a lot well because i was i i feel like i probably had the best public speaking Mm -hmm. so i'm the one who did all the interviews and and i would you know and i was also like very new so sometimes i would say certain things that may have may have not been the best thing to say and that got riled up a lot of people it was colorful too dude there was a charisma attached to what you were doing you know there was an element of it was a cartoonish approach to the way you were marketing yourself so it got attention Absolutely. You know, I tried to, it was something that I kind of tried to do with Teenage Emotions. I was just way too young. Yeah. Back then, I just thought you you would check your email and whatever you got, the best beat, that's what you did. Yeah. You know, until like I got older and I started doing more homework on on, on um, psychedelic rock and just getting into certain things that I loved. And then I dove into, you know, finding musicians and producers that could hone in with me, sit with me, and we could actually bring something to life. And this was the first time I did it, and this is the um, this is the response. Like this is what came from me actually sitting down and building a project from zero. And I have to also just say that you know you have incredible taste um, in music and in collaborators. Shouts out to Drake, man! I love him to death. He loves you as well. Yeah, that's, that's my guy, man. And you've known him forever. We saw you backstage at a show in Birmingham. And yeah, me and Larry. Yeah, it it's so crazy. That's the first day I met him. But we our um, relationship has just grown so like being so tight, Paul. That's crazy. But um, <laughs> but that's my guy, man. That's my brother, man. Like that's like the only person I like. I probably talk to besides like my team on mm-hmm. like a daily basis. You know, like every single day. He actually made he ref, he ref, referenced that at the Apollo show, which was amazing. Mm. I mean, did you make it to either of those shows? I went to the second one. The first one I which I was at. I'm, I'm sure they were similar, but the first one that I was at to me was one of the, it was emotional. When he started with Over uh-huh. My Dead Body, so I tight. was emotional. So tight. And when I went to the second one, I saw the emotion in the room. And then I, that's so funny because um, I had a conversation with him after this. And I and I was saying to him like, man, because, you know, when you're on that stage, you can sometimes feel it, but you you can't. You know, you're like, you're in your zone. You're trying to perform. But as like sitting in the crowd, I watched Everything, you know, and then I had a conversation with him after, and I was just telling him, like, man, you know, the, this music that you made over these this time period has affected so many people. He's legacy now. 
respect to everyone that worked on this, the four guys that worked on this album with me, but it's it was my vision, you know, and it was it was it without m- me it wouldn't have been. But even performance wise, bro, like you really owned this music. I mean, it, it, you would have made something beautiful and fun and done you and done the best you could. Yeah. But I, I think you realize we, what, that you had to stretch yourself, right? Because these players aren't playing. This music is yeah serious. I mean, a song like Drive Me Crazy is like... Yeah, it's tight, right? <laughs> <laughs> we made that here. Who's who's the female Diana singer? Diana Gordon. Di- it's Diana Gordon. Mm-hmm. Oh, sounding amazing. Yeah, she is insane. That little vibrato that she adopts in her voice, voice sometimes, it just yeah. takes it to that 1970s folk thing. It's so crazy, man. I wish I wish people could see like certain rooms we made these records in. We made this in like a shack. <laughs> and Mac DeMarco's shack <clears throat> behind his house. Real, really small shack. But the song sounds larger than life. It's so funny because my mama, she's an interesting person. She doesn't care about music. And I tried to play this album for her months before. Excuse me, months before it came out, mm. like maybe six, seven months ago, and we we're in the car, it was just me and her with Ryan, I was playing, and she just was not listening. And uh, and I just stopped it because she just did not care. By the way, when a mother or a father, at this, no matter how old you get, they don't engage in something you're proud of, it is still sends you back to six years old wanting yeah, to get attention. Well, I mean, my dad loved it so much. Right, right. And I know my parents, like, I never expected my mom to be like, oh my God, the way the chords progressed here. <laughs> You know, like she, she, she doesn't care. Um, uh, so I didn't expect it, but she came to me the other day, and she, we were sitting and talking. She was just talking about how many times she's listened to it, and you know how she loves running out of time, and which was cool because my mom, me and my mom, don't talk about my music ever. So like, I know she really likes it, and that's cool, you know, um, because I, she's never said that before. So I, that meant a lot. For sure. And, but your dad's the flip? Your dad's like... Oh, my, yeah, my dad came and heard it in Sonic Ranch when Coach came, and he instantly, he, he knew all of my references, and he was super proud. But, I mean, my dad has always been proud of me, but I could just tell him seeing me do this type of music. Cause this is, I got this from him. You yeah. know, I, I learned all this from my, you know, from my father at a young age. So he, I know he kind of probably felt the reflection and, like, saw himself in me Wow. Hearing this music, he's super proud. You and Mac DeMarco in a shack with Diana Gordon fills me with great joy. The thought of it, yeah. um, hanging out. Um, it was tight. Can we just talk a little bit more about that experience? Because Mac likes to move in in such a unique way. His latest album, his instrumental album, crazy. R- r- he played the bass on "Driving Crazy." He did. So gifted. With eh? the drums. Oh, he played. He played something. Yeah. On there. Uh, yeah, Mac is awesome. I was talking to Mac last night. I'm, I'm trying to get him to go on tour with me. <laughs> wow, that'd yeah. be so. It's amazing. not. It's not. It's not guaranteed. But I'm trying to. Uh, it was so fun. I mean, talk about someone who doesn't like parties. Yeah, yeah. He was like, he was like, I don't know. I think about it, but he's he's so he's always been so nice to me. Um, and I like I reached out to Mac years ago because I just always have I've been a fan of Mac DeMarco. He's yeah. been the sh- so he, he him extending so much love to me is, is really cool. He's also that's Mac DeMarco singing on Failure mm. at the end when that really weird singing when I was doing that like spoken word talk thing. That's Mac too because he was s- s- making his album at the same same time. Mm. So he had he was traveling all around America recording out of his car and he just so happened to be in New York. Well, actually, I had been in New York for six months. So he came to New York. We were there and he's friends with um. Jake Portrait, mm. and he was in the studio next, and he he came, he spent a couple nights with us, and uh, that that was him doing that. It must have been really. Well, you tell me the experience of recording failure because like, uh, spoken word moments on albums are not uncommon. It's a, it's it can often be the moment that breaks the spell because when someone shares thoughts outside of that ex, that chemistry of melody and music and tempo and dynamics, you've really got to like pull yourself into it yeah. and I thought you did an incredible job on this because I think what you're saying and the way that you dressed it up was pretty flawless I mean what Thanks. was it what was going through your mind what were you trying to experience what was the feeling you were trying to achieve with this okay well ironically originally I didn't want to do it I wanted someone else to do something yeah and I who was that top of mind anyone but I realized I don't really know anybody <laughs> making this album I realized I don't have many like friends like i got like i have my like i have friends but i don't have many like musician musical friends you, you can know? draw on just off just immediately yeah. yeah and 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 i also had this like chip on my shoulder of showing everyone what i could do by myself 
like that I could do this. And I, I didn't want any, I didn't want to do it and someone be able to point a finger at someone else. I'm like, oh, well, he had yeah. these features. It's all or, co-signed. And- you know, or oh, he had this guy producing, which people still are trying to do a little bit. But I, but I wanted to be able to like really show what I could do in my artistry and, my, and, and what, where my creativity could go. So originally I wanted, it was inspired by Blonde. Mm-hmm. The skits on Blonde, how he had those two skits. And so I wanted someone else to do anything. I had a friend in the studio, and I was like, man, can you go in and just, like, do a poem or something? And he did it, and it's, it was so weird. It was so <laughs> it was so weird, and it got dark, and it started talking about murder. Have you, ever, have you like, ever tried to do spontaneous poetry? <laughs> weird. Your subconscious will go to work pretty quickly. Yeah. You'll, get, you'll learn something about yourself real fast. It was weird. So then I was like, I, just come out. I'll try something. And I, I just went in there, and I did that. And, um... It was just really true, you know? I feel like I haven't, I, I have not, I don't, I'm not, I don't go too deep into my personal life when it comes to my music um, because I just don't really feel it's anyone's business um, or care, you know? But I just thought I'd share that because I know in this generation, like the kids, they look on the internet and they feel like maybe they're not doing enough. There's you know? not, there's no inner, refl- there's a, not a lot of inner reflection yeah. going on. Yeah, and it's all just and outside so influences. We're all, yeah. I'm still so young, you know. Like, like to be early twenties, twenty eight, seventeen to twenty five, twenty six, twenty seven. It's okay to still be trying to figure it out. You on the internet, and you have these kids living these extraordinary lives. Me being one of them. Mm. And we always want to try to control things and and whatever. But man, we have no no control. Ah, uh, I mean, of the universe, no. But if you're on destiny, yes. Yeah. For sure, yeah, you can you, charter a path, mm-hmm. but sometimes, like life, it, definitely does detour, and the unexpected ultimately ends up becoming the big part of the fabric of the entire Absolutely. experience. You know what I'm saying? Our little yachty's in the room right here. We're so thrilled to have you, bro. Um, we really are, man. And uh, and I know we spent a lot a lot of time telling you how uh, great this album is. But let's start here. Is such a beautiful body of work and fully realized and achieved from what you've told us you were trying to do. I appreciate it, man. It's cool. I just wanted. It to be, is right. I, it is like I said. I just, I just wanted to be uh, respected. You know. I'm glad you um, said that because I think there was there were people who understood at the very beginning that over time this whole thing would un, would, un, would unveil itself and you would end up doing something really meaningful if you stuck at it. Right. There was a sense of like this is there's a uniqueness to what you were doing right from the very start that felt like it just needed time yeah. and patience and work. You know. But I can imagine that that, that was really a, the, the quietest voice yeah. in the back of your head compared to everything else. And that that quest for respect has been a constant. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because, <laughs> because, because I, I don't think people, I not think, I know that people don't really understand how much I love music. And how much it is like a, it's my life, you know. And I get it from like maybe some of the songs that we... I may have made early in my career that may seem like otherwise. And the majority of these artists coming out don't care about music, you know? And and they do, and it's just for fun or money or, or TikTok blow up or, you know? So it's easy to box in, you know? And I, I like to see what can I do, mm-hmm. you know? Like, yeah. how far can I take it? Yeah. A lot of times I was like, it's how the f- <laughs> am I going to do it? Because yeah. I really want, like, I was like, I wanted to show the most love to the dark side of the moon. Without being like the dark side, I mean, obviously, because I'm my own person. Sure. But how? Mm-hmm. You know? You had and, a sound like, in your head. That's yeah. the crazy thing. How but do I, I realize how, that? I didn't know how to, like, how did they even do it? Yeah. You know? Yeah. But with me watching every documentary and all the interviews and just studying Pink Floyd, like, ah, you know? And then it, I learned so much from making this album. And, um, and, and, and yeah, here we are, you know? Just, I think I just, I, I took a completely different approach with this album than I've ever did in the process of creating something, and I've I, I've learned I've grown so much and I've changed so much as an adult um, in this process. So it all plays a factor and it all shows in this album. That's one of the things I'm loving about this whole experience right now is the fact that from knowing you as that young artist, yeah. <clears throat> trying to add value to your story and not detract from it, which we've never done, mm-hmm. and you know that. Um, but to see you sitting here with that maturity and that growth and that those miles on the road 
is awesome because you just have such a much better understanding. Even what you were talking about before off the air, which we won't go into detail on, but allowing people the space to come to their own conclusion mm -hmm. and not hold them accountable for misinterpreting you in the beginning. Mm -hmm. That's huge. Yeah. Because that revenge is what drives a lot of art. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's, yeah. The, that's the f you juice. Yeah. I definitely didn't do it to say f you though. I just did it to, to be, like I said, to be, be respected. respected. You know, I think what really helped as well, and I have to comment on it, is um, that you had one of the biggest moments, singular moments, right before yeah. you had this album moment. So Poland comes out mm -hmm. and everyone's like, oh, this is Yachty at his most, like, yeah. out of space. And then you flip that with this. So the expectation that Poland's going to lead into you being the Yachty we know on mm -hmm. steroids to being the Yachty we have no idea about was yeah. an epic you must have, that must have been fun for you knowing yeah, that. I was, was like irritating. That. I was pissed. <laughs> because, because I made Poland while making this album on a night on a day when they were like mixing in the other room and I was just bored with the homies. And I was I would have never dropped Poland. Ever, you know, because I was trying to pivot myself into this. So uh I was really irritated when it dropped. But I'm so grateful it did. Yeah. And um it was perfect. Yeah. And like I said, I really don't know what I do next. I don't I don't know if I'm gonna do this again or do more rap, but I I don't know. I fig I, I figured out. You know, ASAP Rocky was telling us that um he would sing Poland to their little one, to their baby. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. That, like that, nursery rhyme levels. That's so tight. I don't know what to say there. That's cool, right? <laughs> that is interesting. That's interesting, right? I got so, I got so obsessed with how like back in the day like you just you didn't fully know. You know, we're in a time period now it's like you just everyone knows exactly how everything is done yeah. and why it's yeah. done. And like that's why like for the longest I was telling my team like I don't want to do any interviews. It's not because I don't like people or I don't like talking. It's just like I don't want to give away everything. Can like, I, I tell have you a the long truth? Documentary on I this. thought you'd say no to me, and not because you're we the only one I did appreciate it. Yeah, I and mean, not because we haven't gotten along. I've always like seeing you. I think you've always known I've mm -hmm. respected you even from the beginning. Yeah, I just thought for that very reason you're like, man, why would I talk about this album? It really speaks for itself. I was so happy you said yes. I mean, it was a great day. I honestly, I even said this morning. Oh, I thought he doesn't show up. Remember, yeah, I had I had anxiety yeah. when yeah. he show up. This is the one I would do if I had. Thank to. you, brother doing um because i like i said i got obsessed with how like i was i was like trying to figure i wanted to so bad i wanted to see them making dark side of moon yeah, and, yeah, and there yeah. is no footage you know yeah. you have it's just them being old as talking about being young yeah. you know yeah. I, like I, I i fell in love with the idea of like because it makes you more curious when you have no clue how something was done you know so like i made this like full documentary of me making this album and i was like wait no, I don't want to show people. I saw a little bit of that how, actually how on I TikTok. I saw there's a couple of images that went up through your publishing site of it. Um, there was some, there was some Polaroids that were on the. Well, that was for I think that was for. Uh, oh yes, yeah, but 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 there's a full full thing. Yeah, like a full like hour and some. Would you put of, it out in like thirty years? I don't know. Been in like thirty years, like you know. Okay, so you're young, trying to find out how Pink Floyd make Dark Side of the Moon. Right. Okay, imagine if you put a documentary out in twenty. 42. Yeah, if I'm still here. For the first time. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. Probably. I don't know. I think, I don't know what I'll do. I just, I want people to be like, like, I, people don't even know how much I'm actually involved with this album, you know? Or even with any project that I've been doing lately, you know? And I, I kind of like it. I like the idea of people like, oh, he couldn't do that. Like, he, like, oh, he, he probably just it's true. was there. You yeah, know, under, like, people underestimate you. It gives you the space to, to actually grow yeah. without, yeah, I love it. Yeah, that. I mean, I just, I, I just, it, it's kind of like a, like, there's this meme of this guy sitting in the corner, like, at a party. I don't know <laughs> yeah. if you guys have seen it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, <laughs> and, and I feel like that's me <laughs> all the time. And, and with yeah, so yeah, many yeah. things that I've I just had a hand in, I just, they, like they don't know how much I'm involved in all the things they listen to every day, but I, I, it's cool. I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't want to like. I hate I'm to break it. To, to I be... hate to break it to you, man. I got bad news for you. Okay. I'm afraid that that secret is getting out there pretty quickly, bro. I, I hate to break so. it. To, I think it is. They people just don't know, you know. Like you're, you're dying like, to tell us. Like though. You can have an you're idea. dying to tell us though. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not. It's. It, I appreciate. I just appreciate. I genuinely just appreciate people even listening, 
You know, like oh, I feel man. like I've had a lot of records that that's the, which, best, that's the better side of the trade, bro. Yeah. <laughs> for us. <laughs> well, it's just true. You know, mm. like I just appreciate people listening. I appreciate people saying I would have never listened to a Yachty album. I'm glad I did. You know, I like that. Or even like anything. I don't know. It's good. You know, you know? when you said that this was the beginning of the next phase, it was so funny because I, as soon as I heard this album, I was like, oh, he can go anywhere now. Yeah. If you can make this. And choose the people you worked with. I mean, members of Chairlift, Unknown Mortal Orchestra, Mac, there's mm-hmm. players. Yep, Jake Portrait, uh, Sad Pony. I mean, Alex G, them. creator of like one of my favorite albums last year and both albums, incredible, unbelievable talent. Yeah, it's tight. These guys are insane. Would you tour? Can you tour with them? Can you take that band on the road? Uh, that would be sick. It would be cool. Uh, but it's a lot to it, you know? It's a lot to it. It's behind the scenes. But what's cool now is that you can do... I'm just, like, trying to feed you with ideas. I'm such a backseat driver. You could do, like, a, your live show now could be all of oh, it. Oh, it's going to be. It's, all of it. Yeah, I, I'm, I have an all-girl band. Amazing. Yeah, I just wanted to show, like, awesome. how sick women can rip, you oh, know? Yeah. I feel like... Uh, that cat, uh, that and, cat's like, out the back long ago. I was just in rehearsal yesterday. I just feel like women don't get... It as much respect as men when it comes to the music industry. So I was like, these songs are pretty badass. To, and I want to show women playing them. You know, I, they didn't make it, but I want to show they can do it, not better. You know, so that was my um, vision. Can we get a Hollywood Bowl on sale, please? I don't know if I... Can I, we get a Hollywood Bowl on how sale? How is that? That's a big place, huh? <sighs> you could, it's, it's you could do that. Don't worry about that. It's LA, don't but it's more than it. just the tickets, bro. It's the experience. Bringing that album I mean, and what yeah, you do to that. If no one's there, then. <laughs> nah, you got it, bro. Listen to what we're telling you. Don't worry about mm. that. We got you. Don't worry. You, have the number one, you, have, <laughs> you, have, you have the number one rock album in the country. Yeah, it's sick. I, in a couple countries. But, um, <laughs> but, but yeah, you're just the yeah. best. <laughs> I love no, it, it's, man. It's, it's cool. I, I would be, man, I haven't toured in like five years. So I, I am dying to see people like care to see me and hear me because I haven't been on stage since I was like 19, 20. I haven't toured since I was like 19 years old. Before I was 21. Yeah. There's so much more to talk about. If you're willing to come in on this one, man, I'm going to, I'm going to make a safe assumption that we're going to continue to talk over the years because absolutely, this is just such a joy for me to be able to touch base with you at certain points in your life and to have the team here for us to share and let you know it's genuine how much we love you and your music. I'm appreciative, man. I don't really know how to feel. Perfect. You know, yeah. I mean, I was, I, I, I knew it would be this way because of the record. You know, it's, it's, it's hard to deny yeah. how special it is, but I just, it's great because I've thought about it and, and, and dreamed of it so many times. But to live in it is, it's uh, refreshing. You know, I went through years of, and even let's say just specifically the last year, a very silent one, because the album was done, and I, and I had this artist integrity of standing on what I believed my future would be. Therefore, like... And showing restraint. Yeah, so like doing no shows and not putting any music out and just... It becomes difficult because it's my career and this is how I work and this is how I live and all these things, but I stood so tall on like, well, I know where I'm about to go next and I can't keep feeding into something I'm about to completely pivot from. (laughs) 